On a stormy night, more than 200 million years ago, the first crocodile appeared. Whether worshipped as a god or feared as a demon, the crocodile has always been the inspiration for extraordinary stories and legends. The Dogans have been living in Mali, in deepest Africa, since the 14th century. For the inhabitants of the village of Damasango, the crocodile is sacred. When the first man came here, it was beautiful. A little paradise, very, very pleasant. There were trees, rabbits, wild animals, as well as water. Water flowed everywhere. But man also came looking for dangerous things here, too. in Africa, the Nile crocodile is violent and attacks men. Oddly enough, here, he lives in perfect harmony with the Dogans. The legend says that one day, a crocodile helped a man cross a flooding river. Ever since, the Dogans consider this animal to be their double. When a child is born, a crocodile is born shortly afterwards. Kombotai is Damasango's shaman, its spiritual guide. He watches over these reptiles constantly. We must nourish and above all protect the crocodiles. Deep sorrow will strike anyone who kills them. These animals live kilometers away from the nearest river. Even their presence here is a mystery, which adds to the Dogen's beliefs about them. We don't even know who brought them here. For us, it's the work of God. Even our ancestors came here looking for crocodiles. Are they the products of God's will, or the last witnesses of a bygone age, when the Sahel was irrigated by numerous rivers? The only thing that counts today is the indestructible bond that unites them to the Dogans. For this people, every stone, plant, or animal is a powerful spirit which must be venerated. 
Even in the village when there is a drought, we ask for the crocodile's blessing. And later, two or three hours later, or during the night, there will be rain. Damasango has about 40 crocodiles. During the mating season, males and females express their desire by blowing bubbles in the air. Babies are born every year, but the number of reptiles remains constant, as if some among them disappear forever. Afterwards, when they're old, many leave here in search of still larger backwaters. We don't know if they fly away when they go, or if they leave on foot when they go. What becomes of the crocodiles during the dry season? Perhaps they fly away, as the Dogans believe, to another African country, where their presence is also a source of mystery. Chad. The Aneti Massif rises up to the heart of the Sahara in the northern part of the country. This once green, fertile area used to border Lake Chad. Ever since the waters receded, all that is left are large ponds, known as the Gelta. The biggest are the Archai canyons. This is where the Bidayat nomads come to water their camels while waiting for the rainy season. It is here, too, that the crocodiles lie on the sand, basking in the sun. These unique survivors of the time when the Sahara was not a desert are perhaps originally from the Nile. Since they are deprived of any contact with other crocodiles, they form a species of their own. The Archai Gelta is both their only refuge and their final home. Finding crocodiles in this desert land is almost like a mirage. Fiercely protected by the Bidiat nomads, they're considered sacred, although no one knows why. This might mean that stories and legends about the crocodiles no longer reached this region, or that the Bidayat preferred to die without revealing their mysteries. Neighboring Burkina, the village of Sabu's 400 inhabitants live under the crocodile's protection. Part of the same Kabore family, their devotion to the crocodiles is a religion. There is no shortage of water here, thus favorizing the presence of the reptiles and perpetuating legends about them. They are recounted so fervently that they often attract tourists passing through. The crocodile is present everywhere in Sabu. It is Cabaret's emblem, and it watches over the clan. The village pond is sacred as well. Each inhabitant believes he possesses his double embodied in a crocodile. Babadu, the village elder, enjoys recounting the legend of Sabu. One day, the ancestor of the Kabore was struck down by a terrible thirst while he was out hunting. 
A crocodile brought him back to life by wetting his lips with the water of his humid tail. And once conscious again, he followed the animal to the pond and quenched his thirst. Ever since we venerate crocodiles, for our destinies are inseparable. When a crocodile dies, we know that one of us will die in the three years that follow. To fight disease and assure peace in the village, the cabaret offer chickens or goats to the pond. I believe in the power of crocodiles. They can cure us and help us. To demonstrate approval of the elder's words, another elder watches over the sacrifice. Paulin is Babadu's son. He often comes to the sacred pond to talk to his crocodile. He tells him secrets in the same way he would confide in a friend. Although these reptiles are not domesticated, their behavior is strangely docile. How can one explain that just 1,000 kilometers away, there are other crocodiles capable of devouring human beings? He doesn't attack me because we're related. I can't see why I should be afraid of a member of my family. <laughs> Bahia was designated by the village wise men as master of the crocodiles. He watches over the pond from dawn to dusk. I am a crocodile. If someone tries to kill one of these animals, I will kill him with an arrow or with a rifle. Africa is rich in extraordinary stories about the Nile crocodile. Their origins, perhaps, go back to ancient Egypt. During that time, the crocodile was considered to be a god. The Nile crocodile's speed and silence, its aggressive and mysterious nature, have always made it a source of both fascination and terror. This opportunistic hunter has become the most formidable predator on the African continent. Ancient Egyptians associated it with the eternal fertilization of their land. For them, the crocodile was the prestigious master of the swamps which roamed through lakes and rivers. Very quickly, Sobek, the crocodile god, became a major divinity. Many sanctuaries were devoted to him. One of the most remarkable is Kam Ambo in the south, not far from Aswan. Sobek has the body of a man mounted on a crocodile's head. Sobek was unique in the Egyptians' imagination, uniting three elements, water, air, and land. 
this powerful and fearful being participated in the development of the world. It is not surprising, therefore, that its renown spread far beyond the Nile. The Waran Collegial Church in the heart of France's Poitou-Charentes region contains a very special relic. In the 16th century, the knight, Claude Gouffier, brought a Nile crocodile back with him from his travels. Ever since, the impaled reptile occupies a place of honor above the confessional and watches over the knight's eternal sleep. In Christianity, the crocodile at first symbolized the devil. Nevertheless, throughout history, many visitors have come here to rub the jaw of the Waran Church's reptile, hoping to find a miracle remedy against fever. God or demon, here, like elsewhere, the crocodile plays an ambiguous role. At the mercy of different beliefs and religions, the one constant is the intense fascination for this animal. Even today, travelers journey throughout the world to feed the imaginations of Western societies. The crocodiles they bring back, however, are very much alive. Luke Fougerol is one of these modern knights. In 1994, he created the first European crocodile farm in the southern French city of Pierre Latte. Allez. Voilà, c'est bon. C'est bon, on peut passer là. Luc is not a scientist, but simply a passionate person. As a child in his native village in Morocco, he fell under the charms of the cobras and other desert snakes. Later, his favorite playmate was a crocodile. He came to the obvious realization that he couldn't live far from reptiles. Presently, more than 500 crocodiles live in Pierlat in reconstructed tropical surroundings. Most of them come from South Africa. Ça va. C'est plus dur que ça. Bon, vas-y, commence à creuser. Moi, je vais surveiller là. Attention, celle qui est à droite là. Luke Fougerol has a highly ambitious goal to assure both the well-being and the reproduction of his borders. The female crocodiles make their nests in the plant debris or in the sand. On va comprendre la température du sable, non, peut-être, pour voir. Il est tiède là, non? Il est tiède, oui, oui. Je pense à 30. They lay anywhere from 6 to 60 eggs, depending on their size. Bon, on va essayer le, le terrain libre aux femelles maintenant. Tu vas voir qu'elles vont. Alors de suite, elles vont venir. revenir. Hein. Tout de suite, oui. Hop, on descend. In nature, eggs and newborns have many predators. Barely 15% will survive. Hmm. 
They can stay like this, completely curled up inside for two or three days sometimes. After that, their home might feel a little too small for them and they decide to leave. The incubation temperature is the only factor determining the crocodile's sex. Generally, males are obtained between 31 and 33 degrees Celsius, and females between 28 and 31 degrees, or at much higher temperatures. This youngster is a male. Welcome to Earth. In nature, once they've survived the first two or three years, crocodiles become practically invulnerable and can live up to 100 years. Originally, Luke was going to raise reptiles for commercial purposes and sell their valuable skin. Thanks to increasing tourist interest in the animals, he changed his mind in favor of enabling young and old alike to see the animals up close in total safety. The ambiguous feelings of attraction and repulsion we feel for the crocodile are perhaps linked to its behavior. Contrary to man, who sometimes moves around for no reason, this reptile remains calm and quiet for long periods of time. Before being protected and enclosed as they are at Pierre Latte, the crocodile terrified Western societies. Believing themselves superior to their surroundings, men tried to dominate nature. In Cuba, Crocodile hunters are called cocodrilos. They capture the rhombifer, their favorite prey, using a lasso. This technique calls for great strength and precision, but it has the advantage of not damaging the reptile's skin. Cocodrileros live at the edge of the swamp and always travel in pairs for greater safety. In the 1950s, in Cuba, as in the rest of the world, commerce and crocodiles beat all previous records, and their numbers decreased dramatically. The exploitation of crocodiles is now regulated by the CITES, the Committee on the International Commerce of Endangered Species. After the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro demanded that the cocodrileros spare the rhombifer, in danger of extinction. Vicente and Jorge, sons of crocodile hunters, have devoted their lives to protecting these reptiles, which their fathers used to hunt relentlessly. They capture them in the swamps and then release them on the Juventud Island in southwestern Cuba. Huge reserves have been created throughout the world. After the period of massacre comes the time of guilt, which is the springboard for a massive and costly conservation program. In Australia, men take great risks to safeguard crocodiles in nature and, at the same time, protect local populations. To capture a rhombifer, Vicente and Jorge use the traditional lasso technique. Today, however, they have to save an animal, 
and proceed with the utmost caution since its attacks can be fatal. In the Dominican Republic, the acutest crocodile is also highly protected. Some peasants here have chosen to leave their coffee plantations to watch over acutus day and night on the immense Lake Enriquio Reserve. Like them, Vicente and Jorge have a true passion for their profession, in spite of the ever-present danger involved. They know their efforts will not go in vain. Since 1990, about 700 rhombophars have been returned to the reserve on Juventud Island. In the Caribbean, Lake Enriquio alone contains 400 acutus crocodiles. Local populations are now aware that these reptiles are a powerful cultural symbol and play a key role in the environment. <laughs> these feared predators contribute to the ecological balance. Thanks to conservation programs, crocodiles are no longer threatened. Their extraordinary stories and legends can continue to arouse man's imagination all the way to the island of Madagascar in the east of Africa. Here, the Lake Anivarano crocodiles are sacred. The legend says that one very hot day, an old man came into the village and asked for water. An old woman was the only person to give some. The old man cursed the other villagers. Your village will be submerged and you will live like animals of the water. After he left, everything flooded over. A lake was created and the villagers were turned into crocodiles. Ever since, the inhabitants of Anivarano consider these reptiles as their ancestors. This is Zance, my oldest grandchild. He's 10. My name is Ginoro. I'm going back with him to my village of Anivorano on the banks of the sacred lake. We're going to sacrifice his zebu to the crocodiles so that my grandson can fulfill his dream to become a sailor. Zance knows that boats are expensive and that his grandfather is old now. He is hoping that the spirits of his ancestors, the Hasana, will help him to buy one.
You see, Zans, that's Anivorano over there, the village where I was born. Soon we'll be at the end of our journey. You will finally discover the land where you came from. The lake crocodiles may have come from the Nile, when Madagascar was still part of the African mainland. Like the Dogans or the Kaboris crocodiles, they do not attack man. Many crocodiles have been killed around the island for their skins. The inhabitants of Anavarano, however, have always struggled to perpetuate the sacred alliance with their ancestors. Today, crocodiles are protected everywhere and the ancient rites can once again take place. Zans and Gennaro wait, with their hearts beating rapidly. The young boy's future is about to be determined. For the sacrifice, the zebu has to be purified by the sacred water of the lake. The Ambomo perfume is exhaled from this cup to keep the evil spirits away. The shaman invokes the Ratsana. If they accept the sacrifice, the crocodiles will leave the lake and come onto the land. A long time ago, Junoro's parents sacrificed a zebu to the ancestors in the hope that their son would acquire a boat of his own. That day, a crocodile came onto the shore to Genoro's great joy. The reptile is probably still alive, somewhere in the sacred lake. Will it come out of the water once again and fulfill young Zans's wish? Look, Zans, they're coming ashore. They have accepted our sacrifice. The ancestors have sealed the youngster's destiny. He will be a sailor. Nile crocodiles are mirrors of the soul, and for some peoples, they play the role of confidant or even spiritual guide. Statues are built in their honor as cult objects. There is another type of crocodile, however, which is not easy to approach and which inspires much more violent myths. This is the sea crocodile, which can live anywhere from Australia, Papua New Guinea, all the way to Sri Lanka. As you see, he's pretty impressive. Although he's small, he won't hesitate to attack. I'm very, very careful with this one. In spite of his small size, he's not afraid in the least of jumping on me, which is pretty incredible. He's called Indo-Pacific, but that refers to the Pacific Ocean. It's got nothing to do with pacifism or passivity. As a terror of the sea, 
this crocodile has inspired bloodthirsty initiation rites. In Papua New Guinea, the Atmul identify themselves totally with this reptile, since for them, he is the creator of all things. By causing the earth to surge up, he enabled the first men to exist. Ever since, the Atmul bear his mark deep in their flesh. Not far away, in Australia, the Aborigines of the Kijas tribe have no qualms about killing the crocodile. Noel and Ombe are Kijas. They live in the heart of Kimberley, one of the wildest regions in Australia. Ombe is 13 years old. He had a dream in which he was chosen to protect his people from Juudu, the great ancestral crocodile. His initiation begins today. For the Atmu people, the crocodile is also the supreme ancestor who lives along the Sepik River. There, in the north of Papua New Guinea, real men have reptile skin. Becoming a human crocodile requires an exhausting ritual known as the Wa'al Bangu, which takes place every four to seven years. Everyone wears his finest costume and ornaments. In the village, there is singing and dancing in honor of the totem animal. For 10 hours, the future initiates will be bewitched as they wait for the scarification ceremony. For the Aborigines, everything began during the time of dreams, when the earth was flat, Animals carved out the landscape and then appeared in dreams to man to enlighten him about their future lives. Old Jerry is a dream catcher. The legend recounts that the crocodile ancestor wanted to marry a black-headed snake. The other animals were against this union. Juhudu condemned them to become mortals. He alone would be the eternal and would return to haunt the swamps and to devour them. Ambi dreamed about crocodiles. According to Jerry, this means that he must kill one of them to become a man and to save his people. The Indo-Pacific crocodile has taken more lives than the great white shark. Very few men dare to cross the rivers since the reptile loves fresh water. An old Kijan belief, however, says that if you don't think about him, he won't attack. Noel helps Ombe throughout the entire initiation. Using white clay, the Aborigines' sacred oka, he draws the protective symbols on the youngster's body. Ombe is now ready to face the crocodile on his own, the final initiation test. The young Kija has spotted one. If Ombe can kill it, he will be nourished by the earth, which will give him all its strength. He will also choose a new name, according to custom. Ombe has to drive his spear into the base of the skull, so as not to harm the animal's soul. He's accomplished his task. 
He has proven he is capable of contributing to the life of the universe by protecting his people from Juudu, the great ancestral crocodile. Now, he can walk proudly towards his destiny as a man. From the depths of Africa, passing through Europe to Asia, the crocodile has fascinated man for centuries and will continue to haunt our dreams and feed our imaginations for a long time to come.